Okay, hi everybody. I just wanted to come on here and talk to you guys a little bit about my Ancestry.com DNA results. So I did a video a couple of months back where I briefly talked about my results because they had just come in and I was really excited to share it with you. However, now I want to go more in depth and talk about uh, my DNA and what it means and a little bit more about uh, some of my ancestry. So as you can see here on Ancestry.com, I'm using uh, the desktop uh, platform. I'm on Firefox. I'm not on the mobile app. So as you can see here, we're on a map and the highest percentage that we have so far for me is England and Northwestern Europe, which is 44%. So in the last 500 years, the highest concentration of my ancestors based off of Ancestry DNA's uh, cross analysis is 44% uh, uh, English. Now this is based off of their newest update they just released an update uh maybe two weeks ago uh it's now october um what is it the second it's october 2nd today all right um and actually uh this is fairly accurate uh based off of the paper trail uh that my ancestry is based off of this seems to be um at least 98 99 percent correct um, so the second one is 20% uh, Irish. It doesn't actually specify between Northern Ireland and um, not Northern Ireland, like Southern Ireland. Sorry, I'm kind of stoned, you guys. I just smoked weed before I uh, wanted to start this video. Anyway, um, the third highest concentration is Scottish, which is 18%. And I noticed that it also includes um, the Northern Islands up there. So that's pretty cool. The fourth would be Sweden. And with the latest update that Ancestry just did, they have now also included Denmark. And my percentages have gone higher. So before this, I think I was only 7 or 8% Swedish. And now it says I'm 16% and now it's also including Denmark. Interesting enough, um, I'm, a, I'm a practicing witch. I have been um, my whole life. Where's my pentacle here? There it is. Uh, I've been a practicing witch my whole life and I feel very drawn uh, towards Nordic magic. So it's quite interesting that I only have a 16% um, match with uh, this part of Northern Europe. However, uh, it's still part of who I am. And I also have 2% uh, Wales, uh, so Welsh. I know absolutely nothing about this country, um, but I would love to learn more. So that's uh, where my ancestors were based off the last 500 years. So if we scroll down here, it says that I have um, three uh, genetic communities. Now this is fairly interesting because uh, my mother was adopted and when she was 40 years old, she said her whole life, all growing up, I am going to be fabulous at 40. Well, when she turned 40 years old, um, her, her biological mother reached out to her via a social worker. She received a letter in the mail asking if she wanted contact with her biological mother, which is my grandmother. Um, and uh, she accepted and two weeks later we met and it was absolutely beautiful. I'll spare some of the details for, for, for privacy, but it was incredible. It was life changing and we have since connected to um, many more family members. So our circle have, of love has expanded, which is awesome. Um, anyway, so let's talk about my communities here. So, um, uh, the first one is the highest concentration is Newfoundland and Southeastern Labrador settlers between 1750 and 1950. Western and Southern Newfoundland settlers. Now, um, to go more into detail a little bit about some of my ancestry, 
Uh, this is a very uh, large place geographically. However, the population is very small and especially with a high concentration of a lot of my ancestors down here. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of endogamy that goes on uh, in that part of the world and uh, that's okay. It's just part of being human and uh, the way our society's culture and the genetics mix. Um, however, it makes it extremely complicated uh, in regards to my DNA um, and my ancestors because I do have a couple of brick walls that are unable to be answered uh, without uh, more of my family members getting tested or a search angel slash somebody who is um, more sophisticated at reading uh, centum organs and DNA and so forth. Um, anyway, so the second one is the Northern New England Settlers, so that would be here. And that's Vermont and Maine, and that would be my Damon family line, D-A-M-O-N. Uh, yes, I am related to Matt Damon, he's my seventh cousin. Everybody always asks me that. I was able to verify that through DNA uh, and uh, family trees. Uh, and third, we have Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island settlers. So I know that my grandmother on my father's side has a lot of family down here in uh, Nova Scotia, which is the Russell family. So if you have any Russell family in this part of the world, we are probably cousins. And if you are related to any Damon families biologically, then we are probably also distant cousins, because all daemons in the world are actually related. There's not that many of us, so um, it only lists 17,000 matches, but that's because they only um, they only show so much. We obviously have way more cousins than that. So anyway, so that's a little bit more about uh, some of my ancestry. So now we're going to go to my family tree here, because I wanted to... Um, reach out to anybody that's a search angel or is more sophisticated in DNA because one of my brick walls is my grandmother's grandmother, uh, Emily Frances Douglas from Newfoundland. She was married to John Leonard James. Um, she's from Brunette, Newfoundland and she was born in 1901 and she died on the 13th of August in 1922. So, um, she died from consumption, uh, which is tuberculosis today. Um, fortunately, I am vaccinated against uh, TB and I live in an era where I'm not going to die from it. Uh, and some people today still suffer from this. So please vaccinate uh, yourself and your children. Um, but rest in peace, Emily Francis. Uh, my great great grandmother um i don't know who her mother and father are uh her last name uh, as, as assuming is douglas i mean that's what's on her record um but if there's any genealogists out there or anybody that uh can search a brunette newfoundland and look up Emily Frances Douglas. There is one other Douglas family on the island. However, that Douglas family does not have Emily Frances listed as the child in any of the census records. However, because that's her last name, I would assume that she's part of the family and maybe she just wasn't included on the record or maybe there's another story another mystery that whether somebody today can figure out or some future generation whether you are a descendant of me or my family or the fa or, or a descendant of emily francis douglas her her daughter my great grandmother annie phyllis taylor james um if you're related to any of these people and you know the story of uh who Emily Francis, who her parents are, which would be my uh, third great grandparents. I would love uh, more information about that. Anyways, that's a little bit of uh, some of the mysteries in my life and it has been an honor sharing this with you. 
and I hope that you enjoyed my video. Uh, if you like it, please like, subscribe, and comment. Please share any of your uh, brick wall stories that you may have in your family tree. Uh, that's all for now, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!